are already but I'm just going to give us a couple okay it just indicated that it started I don't know um, I see that a couple people are already here but I'm just gonna give a few minutes for everyone else to arrive um, before I get started with the live stream I know that because of time issues a lot of people aren't gonna be able to make it to the actual live stream so I'm hoping that when this video goes live on the YouTube channel and it's just, you know, like a normal video that you can comment on, my hope is that the comment section there will be just as lively and wonderful as it is here. So, if you are watching this after the fact, make sure you get down below, ask your questions. I will do my best to be really active in those comment sections, okay? All right. And let me get my... Uh comment ability here. Thank you all for showing up, by the way, and I was so excited. I first thought about this book club, and I was like, yeah, you know, maybe like 10 people will be interested in it, and then I've been so impressed by the feedback, and Britt, I'm glad to see that you're here. Very good. Hold on one second. Okay. All right. Numbers are growing. So does everybody have their copy of How Not to Die? I kind of want to know, like, <laughs> hi, Herbal Bunny, nice name. I want to know how many of you guys have, like, the physical copy and how many of you guys got either the Audible or the Kindle version, and how are you feeling about that? I, for one, like, I know that I'm a book learner. I tried to switch over to the, to, like, the ebook version, which I do have on my phone, but... Nonetheless, it's like, I find that it doesn't get in my brain as well. You know? Thank you. Thank you, guys. <laughs> I know. It is. It is a very big book. All right. Hold on one second. I'm trying to find myself. Okay. I think I, I, think I got it. Maybe. Okay. All right. Now I'm watching myself, too. Very good. Okay. Everybody ready to get started? Um, oh, that's good. Some of you guys got, got it from the library, too. Um, right before we get started, Gothic Hippie says, I have a question about sensitivities to bakers and brewers yeast. Can I still eat nutritional yeast, or is it a no-no? I do know that they are very much different species, but I don't know for sure whether or not that's going to be okay. Asking whoever diagnosed you with the sensitivity, or is that something that you like figured out by yourself? I'm not sure. But asking that person might be a better a better idea because I don't know off the top of my head. Okay, so getting started with how not to die. Before we get too started, I was doing a little bit more online research, and um, I saw a lot of people, especially from the paleo community, you know, they just complain about every single plant-based book that comes out, much like we complain about them. But a lot of people complaining about Dr. Greger being infamous, infamous for cherry picking. And, you know, and they say things like, oh, well, you know, they just ignore the studies that come out saying that, like, dairy is really good for you or eggs are really good for you. And with, with those sorts of studies, I've seen many, many plant-based doctors review those studies and determine that... Um, generally speaking, you notice that like the statistical analysis has been kind of tweaked or the study format has been tweaked because it's usually an industry-funded study. And so when, when you're looking at scientific research, like just because it's science doesn't mean it's perfect. It doesn't mean that it was done objectively. It doesn't mean necessarily that it's, it's a good legitimate study that's going to provide real legitimate results. You can very easily tweak science in order to get the finding that you're looking for. So when you are looking at studies, it's wise to think about the quality of the studies. And if a doctor chooses not to reference a study that is subpar or industry funded or comes up with a conclusion that goes against 60 years of other scientific studies, then I think that they are rightfully making the right choice in choosing to either ignore that study or rebut that study or, 
not change their entire practice or what they recommend to patients immediately because of one study, okay? You also, you know, Dr. Greger, how many pages is it? It's like 150 pages of notes. It's kind of, I mean, if you only choose one or two studies and then base your whole dietary recommendations off one or two studies, that would definitely be cherry picking, but I... I definitely don't get that feeling from Dr. Greger. There's also the case of financial incentives, which will bring us into the preface of the book. And I really do appreciate that Dr. Greger takes the time to um, kindly and... What's the word I'm looking for? Objectively, like, you know, he doesn't attack anyone, but he just brings up the fact that you really have to consider financial incentives when you're talking about nutrition information. Um, because so many people have so much to gain and or lose based on the information that they're giving, you know? Um, and I also say with, with things like plant-based doctors and such, you can certainly choose to learn how to interpret research and statistical findings and biostatistics. You know, a few years ago I started to, to try to educate myself and learn from others about how to interpret research or, you know, biostatistics. And it's not easy. <laughs> and, um, I'm, you know, not professionally trained in that, so I definitely have sources that I trust, and I encourage other people to find sources that they trust, sources that have kind of proven themselves over time to have integrity, and to get your information from those sources instead of blindly picking up information from whomever on the internet, especially when so many people on the internet just say things they don't necessarily cite them. I know a lot of times I don't necessarily cite everything that I say, but um, when you find people making fantastical claims about things that they don't cite, and then usually they're trying to sell you a supplement in conjunction with their advice. And um, that worries me. But if I, th I think it's great for people to learn for themselves, to understand how to read a study, to understand a little bit of the jargon that's associated and to get a good understanding of basic anatomy and physiology. And that can help you a lot in weeding through what makes sense and what doesn't necessarily and what you need to fact check more. Okay. Basically just be suspicious. Always. Question everything. <laughs> Use your common sense. That's what I live by. And always, always question people's motives <laughs> and what they're selling you. Okay. All right. And I'll, I'll just say one more thing. I've seen Dr. Greger accused of, like, having an agenda, right? Of course, everybody has an agenda. Well, I mean, everyone that bothers to have an opinion kind of has an agenda, right? But it's like, what what is that agenda rooted in? Is it rooted in greed? Is it rooted in wanting to make as much money off of a desperate person as you possibly can by selling them misinformation and supplements? Or does it appear to be rooted in uh, uh, something with more integrity? Like just wanting people to be healthier and be able to survive <laughs> into old age. Okay, so that pretty much covers the preface and we'll move into the intro of Lifespan versus health span, I feel like, is something that isn't taken into account very often. And lifespan would be how long you're physically alive on this planet, breathing, and how long, as opposed to health span, which is how long you are up and functional and able to recall facts and remember where you put your keys, although I do that now, so... <laughs> Anyway, um, basically, as long as you're able to be functional and mostly pain-free, you know, no one wants to be in chronic pain all the time, right? And what, what Dr. Greger talks about in the intro, and what I think is really important for us to remember, is that we have gotten fairly good at promoting a long lifespan. 
unfortunately, a lot of that life, especially in the end of life, is spent incapacitated, where you can't get up by yourself, you can't take care of yourself, you can't feed yourself, you can't fulfill your own basic needs. And basically that's why we have such a huge population of nursing homes, people in nursing homes who have to be cared for 24 hours a day. I know, you know, Levi has family in nursing homes and it's like they can't do anything for themselves. They have to be locked up because they've started to experience dementia and it's, it's not a very good quality of life. And so personally, I'm after a good quality life. I don't necessarily care how long I live but I want a good quality of life. And the intro also got me thinking, like, how do I want to die? I, I know I have thought about it before, and I'm really interested... I'm really interested to get your all's opinions. Like, if you've ever thought about how you want to exit this world and what that process might be like, personally, I want to die in my sleep. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know necessarily from what, but I just want to go to sleep and just, you know, not wake up in my physical body again, right? <laughs> that or some kind of like, just very fast accident that I don't feel. Um, but instead what we have are, you know, you look at the 15 largest causes of death, you get coronary heart disease. Now oh, it looks like I might be frozen. I apologize if I am frozen. Yep. Okay. I don't know if I'm frozen for you guys. But, um, okay. Frozen. Uh oh. Okay. Still, I know I'm still frozen for me too. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> you can hear me. I'm just in in this like really super attractive. Okay. Yeah, Five X Disney fans. I would agree. His grandmother's story was really impressive in the beginning. I'm I'm very excited that that's that that's something that happened to him so that he was able to give us what we have now. Okay, so I'm still getting your comments. If you guys can just let me know if the audio is still going and hopefully I will unfreeze at some point. You know, if you look at the top 15 causes of death, you see that a lot of them, you know, heart disease is like a 50% chance that you're just gonna go and it's just gonna be quick. It'll probably be a little bit painful, but you'll just exit the earth and that'll be that. Um, there, the, the other 50% is when you start experiencing things like chronic chest pain or um, angina, you know, is what it's called, is when you try to start move, moving and you experience, ac experience pain with activity and that's, you know, that's really no way to live, and it's very limiting. And I know that, I think it was in the first chapter, Dr. Greger was discussing um, people with angina who had amazing improvements on a plant-based diet. But once you start getting into um, the other diseases, like lung diseases, brain diseases, digestive cancers, infections, diabetes, high blood pressure, liver disease, blood cancers, kidney disease, breast cancer, prostate cancer, and Parkinson's disease, you know, you're looking at a very long, drawn-out exit from this world, and it's just, it's really hard to think about, to go through personally, and then, yes, you know, 5X Disney fans down here, she says, I wish my family would listen to the things that I say because I fear for many of them, and I totally agree. I... I really am scared for my family, um, not the family that I just recently married into because, you know, we eat a pretty, a pretty good diet, but definitely for my extended family, I'm really thankful that my dad takes pretty good care of himself, but it's like 
the other members, you just, you know, you can't force them. And if they don't want to do it, I, it's, it's just heartbreaking. All right, I'm still frozen on my end. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I unfreeze at some point. I don't know, we might have to stop and restart, although I really, I really hate to break this up into two videos. It's gonna drive me crazy. It's always something. <laughs> it's always something. Okay, and so, Basically, <laughs> let it go. Just let it go. Yes, good luck. <laughs> so basically, I'm going for a good health span, and this is why I try to eat well and uh, and take care of myself because I want to be healthy until I just hopefully die in my sleep, easy, painless. Just move on. Oh, Lucy says my partner's mother just got diagnosed with Parkinson's, and I sent her to the Ritual podcast with Dina and Aisha Shirazi. Yeah, and she bought their book immediately and went vegan. Wow, that's you know it's unfortunate that sometimes it's those big diagnoses that really drive people to towards veganism. I know a, a good friend of mine; her father passed away earlier this year, or no, it was last year now, and he he always had told her I'll go vegan when I get when I get uh, when I get cancer and then he got cancer and went into a coma before she was able to fly to where he was and then he passed away four days later so you know we don't know what kind of time we have and just the thought of the amount of loss and pain that his family has had to go through is really devastating. And I'm not implying that a plant-based diet could have necessarily prevented that, but there is a good chance that it would have had an effect or at least helped him to survive longer. So another thing that was uh, really well addressed in the intro was why doctors don't counsel us on nutrition. And I know that every time I've gone to the doctor, back in the day when I had hypothyroid and was eating a pretty poor diet, uh, understandably, I needed nutritional counseling, but I only ever, I never did get good nutritional counseling. I just got, oh, eat a balanced diet, or, you know, just make sure you're getting enough of everything. There wasn't anything specific <laughs> or helpful. And I'm kind of wondering if you guys have ever been to the doctor and been counseled on diet because I'm, I'm just curious to know if the tides are starting to turn where, where doctors come in. <laughs> My doctor told me to eat less. That's pretty sad, Felix. Yeah, and that's a common thing that doctors recommend. You know, they just say, oh, you just need to lose weight. So they say, oh, go on go on and just, you know, do the Atkins diet or do a low carb diet. Never, we got never, never, sadly, no. <laughs> Someone's doctor said to eat more. Well, you know, it just depends on what you need to do, either gain or lose weight. I know a very popular recommendation for people who are suffering from, you know, being underweight or have had anorexia is to just tell them to go and eat at McDonald's every day, which I think is a terrible recommendation. <laughs> Redheaded Princess says, my doctor did a full blood workup and supported me in being vegan. That's awesome. That's really great to hear. Um, it's so exciting when doctors support veganism instead of telling people that they're going to die of protein deficiencies. All right. And was the advice, like if anyone got advice from their doctor, I would love to know if it was more... Um, Lady of the Snowy Lakes, my question was whether or not your doctor has ever counseled you on nutrition. And by that I mean like your mainstream doctor. GP, someone like that. My doctor asked if I was a quote unquote good vegan or a bad vegan, <laughs> which I guess is valid, yeah. Make sure that you're not just surviving off of junk food. <laughs> And, okay, so also in the intro of How Not to Die, did you guys see the, the American Heart Association's Simple 7? So I was really excited about that. That was seven factors that can lead to a healthier life. And I was really impressed that they actually bothered to do that. <laughs> 
What I wasn't impressed with was that only 1% of the respondents met the very lax dietary recommendations. So, their, uh, their seven recommendations was number one, don't smoke. Number two, have a healthy BMI. So that basically means don't be overweight. Unfortunately, they don't distinguish, you know, lean mass from, from being, you know, skinny fat. But it's a step in the right direction, I suppose. Number three was being active, which meant walking for 22 minutes a day or more. Uh, four was healthy eating, which, as I mentioned a moment ago, is pretty lax, which just meant that you got your uh, RDA for fruits and veggies, whole grains, and you drink less or no soda. Uh, we got the average cholesterol has to be, oh I'm sorry, cholesterol has to be below average, which I assume that they mean like under 200, which is about the average cholesterol. And then number six was to have a normal BP, which is less than 140 over 80, or around there, so that, that's bordering on high blood pressure. And then you would have normal blood sugar from a fasting blood glucose. All right. And I was wondering if you guys know how many of those you currently are meeting. If anybody knows. Oh, Amber says she donated blood yesterday and her blood pressure was 93 over 52 or something crazy like that. Yeah, that's that's a pretty good blood pressure. <laughs> I, when I go to the dentist, they usually take mine and mine's like it's like 110 or 115 over 60, I think it was. And I'm always a little bit surprised that it's that high. When I take it at home, it's lower, but I figure it's just because I'm at the dentist and I, I, just, I get really uncomfortable with the dentist. <laughs> Redheaded Princess says, that's the first time in my life I would be meeting all of them. That's awesome. Oh, yep, yeah, thank you for asking. Those recommendations are... They are mentioned on page four of the introduction, and then he talks about it until page six. All right. For the people who participated in that survey, only one person out of 1,933 met all of those. Did you guys see that statistic? I'm... I'm just happy that I'm that person. <laughs> like, I'm the weirdo. <laughs> so next week we will be discussing... <laughs> that was um, only one person out of 1,933 met all seven, which blows my mind. And like I was saying, next week we will be discussing loneliness and feelings of alienation. <laughs> all right. So it appears, it appears that the live feed is not going to pick back up. I will take a vote. How many of you all would like me to stop this and then restart the video? I know it'll be a little bit inconvenient, but I also would like to not be staring at that face. So yeah, restart? Okay. Backspace was saying, I was saying 120 over 80 because that's the normal BP cutoff beyond which you're considered to have high blood pressure or maybe it's pre-hypertensive. Yeah, I think, I think that's pre-hypertensive because um, I know that I'm commonly around 120 over 80 and they're like, yeah, it's fine, it's normal. Um, but if you start getting higher, that's definitely pre-hypertensive. Um, ideally, you know, vegans would be lower. Okay, okay, it looks like everybody prefers that I restart. So I'm going to do that and I will start another live feed right away. It'll probably take me about one minute to enter the title and everything. So hang tight guys. Sorry. I'll be right back.